Hello! So this evening we're going to take a look at the new version of the BAE-146 that Just Flight have released today for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The major thing we're going to look at in this video is the new navigation computer, the UNS-1, which is a period-accurate navigation computer, unlike the retrofitted working title unit that was in the aircraft previously. So as you can see, I think the aeroplane has received a fairly major visual overhaul as well. If we go inside, you'll see the, the model update as we walk through the doorway, and you'll see the difference. So as we come in, it's a lot higher resolution, the textures are a lot higher resolution, and it's the same throughout, so the cabin is now wonderfully modelled. And a lot of things work, so the things like the teapot in the kitchen works, and the, um, the, the little... Um, cabin music player works and the various intercom buttons all work so yeah it's quite remarkable really so when we come into the cabin though the main thing we're going to be looking at quite apart from the cabin which is higher resolution and better modeled than it was previously the thing we're going to be looking at is the guidance computer down here so as we said it previously had the working title CJ4 guidance computer kind of retrofitted in. So we're going to put the drone camera to one side and go back to the cockpit view. And let's go and move our view over here within the cockpit. Actually, before we do that, let's go and get the aircraft powered up just enough to switch on the guidance computer so we can have a play with it and I can walk you through it and show you how it works. So to do that within the BAE 146, first, of, first things first, we'll go and turn the batteries on and then we'll turn the left inner pump on and then we'll turn on, oh we've already got it turned on, we'll turn the APU on. You can tell I've been um, revising, looking around the aeroplane, making sure I had my story straight before I did this. So you can see the APU is should be coming up, it's actually decelerating at the moment. So it should come back up again, let's have a wait and see what happens. Have I completely broken the aeroplane? It would appear I have. So let's turn that back off and start it again, there we go. I'm good at breaking things, but this is how you learn. You um, flick switches, you watch dials, you watch circuits tripping and and you understand what is connected to what around the aeroplane. So when the APU gets up to 100%, we'll be able to switch on the generator for the APU, and that will give us power to the aircraft. Then we can switch on the avionics overhead. So there we go, we're just waiting for it to come up to 100%. Give it a few seconds. There we go. So APU generator can go on, and then the avionics suite can come on, and then down in the centre pedestal, let's get the view nicely lined up with it, we've got the UNS-1 guidance computer. So let's go and turn the power on on it, and it goes through a boot up sequence. So you get the CPU and the RAM is checked, it checks the databases in its databanks, and it basically steps through this and then eventually it will come up with a status page showing the data of its database. Or the, the date, sorry, of its database. There we go. So you get the, the nav database expiry date, which is all good. And it also gives you the, the um, location of the aircraft from GPS. So we can accept that. And then there's a lot of buttons here. Before we get into that, I think it might be useful to go and look at what we're going to program into it. So we are sat on the ground at Stansted Airport. So we're going to program in a standard instrument departure. And then we're going to program quite an involved route across the UK and into... Um, Ireland, so we're going to go to Dublin, so we'll be using a standard terminal arrival route and an approach into Dublin, but we'll be using airways as well, just to see how to program them, because I think it's, it's quite fascinating to learn the ins and outs of programming a system. Okay, so we've got the, the system here, let's just get it lined up a little bit better in the screen, there we go. Can I get it any better than that if I tilt this slightly? Anyway, Let's have a look through the various pages then. So we've got the messages page. So whenever you, you get a message icon flashes during flight if there is a message for you to go read. Usually they you know they're messages about course direction changes, things like that. There's a data page that doesn't do anything yet. There's the fuel page where you can any of these numbers you can select the soft key next to it and you can change the numbers. So 
we could obviously go in and program that up as required so the the system has half a chance of replicating you know the real world so if we if you see at the top here it's got one out of two that's one out of two pages the m also means there's a menu page associated with this so we can go next to look at page two we can go previous to look at page one and we can press menu to see fuel options in this case okay so if we go back to fuel that will come back into here tune isn't operative yet previous and next we've already seen what that does the power and dim button if you press power that was how we switched it on to begin with we can switch it back off again so if you do completely mess it up you can just switch it off and back on and it will forget everything um, you can obviously brighten and dim the screen and you can just cancel your way out of here yeah so the nav button while you're in flight will show you status of the aircraft while you're flying it also gives you the option to go into maneuvers we'll come back and look at that after we've programmed a flight plan it's an interesting one um, the DTO is direct to so you can key in a waypoint you want to fly direct to and obviously then confirm it and the airplane will react to that flight plan shows you your flight plan that you are programming in so we'll go through that in a moment and program a flight plan in VNAV is for reference only I don't think the VNAV follows it in the in the aeroplane but I may be wrong about that I've not actually flown it yet but as far as I'm aware the 146 doesn't actually have it implemented so this is for um, how would you put it for reference purposes while you were flying okay there's a list button this becomes important when we're programming the flight plan you'll see this a lot in a moment um, there's also the menu we, you've already seen the menu it's only available under certain circumstances um, but it does change what it does so if you haven't got an M at the top corner you'll see this screen when you press M and it lets you program most importantly departures and arrivals so SIDS and STARS okay so let's go back to the flight plan page and program our flight plan in then so we're going to leave from Stansted let's also pull up notepad so I've got the text version of the flight plan showing the airways so we're going to go from Stansted do the NUG B1R standard instrument departure we're going to go that takes us to Nugbo then we're going to do the M183 airway to Silver P86 to Didza L9 to Nixie M17 to Vatry um, and then that's the standard terminal arrival route into Dublin and we'll be landing ILS runway 28 left okay so first thing we do then is put in Stansted so EGSS notice the focus was already up here if it wasn't you have to select next to the number on the flight plan that you want to change okay so we can go E G S S and press enter it will look it up in the database and show us some uh, summary information for us to confirm that that's the one we meant so yes that's correct that is the stance that we meant so where do we go next on our flight plan we are going to do a SID but we're not going to do it here um, we go to Nugbo next so N U G B O and press enter again it confirms it there's only one of them in the database otherwise I could go forwards and backwards to select the correct one and I can accept accept Nugbo okay now I want to do an airway I want to do M183 to silver how do I do that you make sure the focus is below the, uh, the the waypoint you are leaving and you press the list button that pulls up by default a list of VORs that are nearby but underneath the VOR soft key is the airway soft key so if you press airway it shows you the airways that leave the waypoint that was above the point we had on the flight plan page so I want to go via M183 I can't key that in I have to key in the number next to it this is where I think this is kind of delightfully clunky and very 1980s so we put in number one and press enter and it says now it's asking on route M183 how far do we want to fly along that airway we want to go M183 to silver so we have to key in number two we can't key in silver we have to key number two I press enter so that's done that EGSS to Nugbo onto Silver obviously there are no intermediate waypoints there therefore it's not showing any more waypoints on our flight plan yet so from Silver we want P86 to Didza so same thing again 
make sure the focus is the line after go to list go to airways we want P86 which is number 3 press enter we want to go to DIDSA which is number 2 and press enter ok no intermediate waypoints again these are all short uses of airways we're going to see a load on the next one so from DIDSA we want to go L9 to Nixie so make sure we're in the line underneath list airways number 1 for L9 we want to go all the way down to Nixie, N-I-C-X-I, number 3, and press enter. Notice we're suddenly on page 4 of the flight plan. If we go previous, you can see all of those intermediate waypoints have been inserted. And the reason for that, if we go and look at this in little nav map, it's a little bit easier to see here. Look at L9 stretches out all the way across all of these waypoints, right the way until we get to Nixie. Then we want to take M17 up to Vatry. So we go next and we make sure we're in the line underneath Nixie. List, airway, M17 is number two and Vatry is number three and press enter. So that's the basic route all the way up to the star. Now we need to put in the airport we're going to. So E IDW is the ICAO code for Dublin. So press enter. Again, it's confirming it. Dublin International. Yes, that's correct. And it's gone to the next page on the flight plan, but we can press previous and, and we can see there we go. So we've got the whole flight plan, but we haven't got the SID or the star yet. So all you do for that is you go and press menu and you go depart to do the SID. So how are we going to leave? Obviously we've already programmed in where we're leaving from as the first point in the flight plan. So if we click depart, it knows we're at EGSS. So it wants to know which runway we're leaving on. And again, we can't type 22. We have to type number three. I press enter. And I think we're doing NUG B, let's just check it. We're doing NUG B1R. So number six and press enter and there isn't any um, transitions involved in this so we just press flight plan afterwards and you can see there it's all inserted in already so if we go next you can see there's Nugbo so if we go previous those were the steps of the star if we zoom in on the map you can actually see them so let's just come in over here look we've got D221C D169H so if we come and have a look 221C 169H there you go and it's also put in all of the vertical restrictions in the way. OK, so then we want to do the start as well. So we press the menu button again and we click on arrive. And now we're going to come into 28 left at Dublin, so number four. And press enter. And then it comes up with the stars. So let's find out which star we were doing. We were going to do the Vatra 3L. OK, so you can't see it on this list, so we go next page. Vatra 3L, there it is, number 10. So key in number 10, press enter. And we want ILS for 28 left, so number 2, press enter. And it's the PISSA um, transition on the approach. So number 3, and press enter. And then go back to the flight plan, and it's all in there now. OK. So because, notice it says the menu key is up there, so if we press menu, that basically just means that there are special things in here, like departure and arrival, and all the rest of it. So if you go back to the flight plan, menu lights up on lots of things, just to, sh to show you that there are options. Okay, so what if we want to change our flight plan after the fact? So we've got the basics in using all the airways, and that was all nice and easy. So what if we want to modify it? So let's come down through our flight plan. We've got this step here from Buck Go to Tigui in the middle of the flight plan. So let's see if we can find that on the map. Uh, there's Tigui. Yeah, that's a good one. Look, so Buck, Buck Go over to Tigui, and there's a waypoint over here, Perup. What if we wanted to go from Buck Go to Perup and then on to Tigui? How do we program this into here? So we select the line below Buck Go. We basically select the line we want to push further on. And then we type in Perup. Press Enter. 
it confirms from the database that this is the correct pair up so we accept it and it's done it so buck go to pair up to tigui if we decide oh actually that was a colossal mistake we don't want to do that we can just select pair up and we can delete it and then confirm it by deleting again and it's gone okay so hopefully this has helped you understand a little bit about flying you know or programming the system on the um the 146 the uns1 the one thing i haven't covered yet is if you come back to the nav page so this will show you your progress while you're en route there's a maneuver page in here so if we click on maneuver the major thing this can do is holding definitions so if we go into holding it's asking for a fix so we can go previous and next on this so this is the waypoints that are programmed into our flight plan already yeah so if we say buck go let's choose that one again so uh, when we get to buck go let's say we want to have a hold so we go one three is the point at which we want our hold and we press enter and it gives you a lovely little diagram of the holding so at buck go it's going to do a right turn and then you've got the the parameters of the hold that you can change just by selecting the the focus on each one and keying something else in so just to show you that if we say left instead of right and press enter the diagram flips around and shows you a left turn instead it's kind of very idealized but it's a great way of you know thinking about where the parameters relate to obviously i can't arm it because i'm not in flight so you only be able to arm the hold once you are actually flying notice you can also do two holds so anyway if we come back out of here uh, STX isn't uh, so SXTK sorry isn't um, implemented yet and PVOR isn't either as far as I'm aware heading lets you just is the the basic nav screen basically yeah so you saw the maneuver screen and then you've got the heading screen Okay, so we've pretty much covered most of it. There's a performance page as well. I haven't really delved into this too much, but it's all covered in the manual. The thing I really wanted to focus on today was actually just programming the flight plans in, and, and you've seen how to do that now, and it's not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Hopefully that's been interesting for you, and I'll record a full flight very soon with the 146. So I will see you again soon. Take care.